Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Curse of the Flying Wombat. You may remember last week, and you may remember the week before, but you've probably forgotten that at the end of last week's episode, Tim Brown Windsor and his fiancée Fiona Rabbit Vacuum were having a quiet swim in the limpid waters. Or a quiet limb in the swimming waters of the Indian Ocean. Uh, excuse me, but how do you know it's the Indian Ocean? I can see Nepal! Ah! What's happened to him? Well, you know what they say, see Nepal and die. <laughs> That's an appalling joke. <laughs> anyway, all of a sudden, Captain Cleese sighted sharks. I say, uh, look out, sharks! Help! Uh, help! Look out, sharks! Help! Help! help. Sharks! Help! No, no, I'm sorry, they're herrings. <laughs> Well, what on earth made you say they were sharks? Well, I was confused by the way they were all dancing around singing Nelly Dean. <laughs> You're not going to say they were pickled herrings? Not with this audience, no. Uh, <laughs> in a moment, the whole party was on the scene. Lady Constance, Maisie Robinson, the International Temptress, Colonel Clutch Feathering Hall. And Grimbling. Nosebone, the Great White Hunter, Wong the Supply Keeper and his brother Wong too. And Grimbling. Little did they know that while their backs were turned, the mysterious Casey O'Sullivan and his henchman Masha Wilkins were busy plotting. And Grimbling. <laughs> Grimbling, Grimbling, Grimbling. 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 Suddenly, the two blackguards soared through the piece of string connecting the jetty to the mainland, and it floated away. Ten souls adrift on a floating desert mainland. <laughs> captain Cleese knew exactly what to say. We're in trouble. You're right, Captain. Look at us. We've all turned dark red. Yes, we're marooned. <laughs> But we must get under control. <laughs> now, has anyone here driven a mainland before? I used to have a Land Rover. Well, how did it go? Woof, woof. That's a Jeep joke. <laughs> now, you three go over and sit on the edge and row us along. And Grimbling, you too. Take a paddle. Quick, look, steer to the left. Uh, so there is. Silly old cow. Did somebody call? So on they drifted, lazing their days away. Lays, 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 lays. On through the Tropic of Cancer. Lady Chatterley's lover, Fanny Hill. <laughs> but after six weeks, they still weren't getting anywhere. They're not reading them properly, are they? <laughs> captain, Captain, quick look, there's a bottle floating in the water. What does it say? It says, um, just a minute. <laughs> and it says, bottles in Scotland. <laughs> Suddenly, suddenly, Tim Brown Windsor noticed something in the sand. I say, look, everybody, something in the sand. Well, start digging. Oh, yeah, baby. Ooh, boobie, ski, bam, ski, bar, cool, no, man, dig, dig, dig. No, 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 In the sand. Oh. oh, yes, I've hit something. There's something buried here. Well, dig it out. Here we are. It's a small boat. Oh, a dugout canoe. Oh. You're right. <laughs> and look, there are two sinister eastern gentlemen in it. What on earth were they doing down We belong there? to an underground movement. Oh, it sucks. It's the notorious Arabian alcoholic. Must have a pint and his friend. <laughs> the Syrian bookie, Ali. Ali what? Ali, Ali tend to the field. <laughs> and there's a woman with them. Ah, is this the woman you are pleased to call your wife? No. You mean you're not married? I'm not pleased. <laughs> Come here. You can have her for a song. Oh, very well. <laughs> the moon is a mimi. What's that old bag you've got there? He says it's his wife. <laughs> well, open it up and see. I'm frightened. Listen, there's something singing in there. <laughs> I'd know that voice anywhere. Who is it, Lady Constance? It's Flossie, my twin sister. <laughs> we would like to mention at this point <laughs> that Mr. Brooke Taylor is playing not only Tim Brown Windsor, but both his aunts as well. Lady Constance de Coverlet. Flossie. And her sister Flossie. Constant. If you have any complaints, please write to Timbrook Taylor enclosing a stamped addressed vulture. Now, dear boy. Yes? Don't interrupt. Introduce me to your friends. Okay, Captain Cleese, this is my aunt's twin sister, Flossie. How do you do? Uh, my word, aren't they a splendid pair? So glad you noticed. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. You aren't by any chance Hurricane Flossie, the vaudeville vamp. Oh, yes, I... You mean 
you were on the board? Frequently. <laughs> I used to impersonate all the famous women of my day. Sarah Bernhardt, Marjorie Hatchfield, Ethel Spriggs. I used to get up on the stage and take them all off. <laughs> what an act that was, yeah. Excuse me, Lady Constance. Tea's ready. The hens laid two nice eggs and I've laid the table. <laughs> and later you're all invited for an Indian meal and a booze up. Ah, a curry with a binge on top. <laughs> buona, buona. What is it, Noseboat? Yes, it's oh, nice to see grief. you. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> We would like to mention at this point that Mr. Hardy is playing both Nosebone the Great White Hunter and Grimbling the Boring Old Butler. <laughs> Look, why don't I ever get any interesting parts? Anyway, I'm fed up with it. Look, over there, there's a gentleman coming across the sand. He says he's an out-of-work rabbi from Cairo, born of Lithuanian parents, brought up in Germany, learnt English from an Irishman and educated in Bangkok. He says he's known to his friends as a nuke of the North and he'll be played by Hat David Hatch. Right. What? <laughs> Oh, no, I, I'm not playing him. Look, here he is, Buana. You'll have to. Oh. Hello, Nanook. Welcome to our beach. Oh, Vizain and Vigora Covers. Oh, awfully nice to see you, my little darlings. Hallelujah. And as we say at the London School of Economics, <laughs> to the lot of you. <laughs> I have you see a gun with live ammunition. I also have a sore throat. Make one artificial move, and my goodness gracious me, I shall shoot you. And that goes for you too, Fraulein, baby doll. Uh, what, what do you mean by this? I wish I knew. But what are you going to do with us? I'm taking you all into slavery. I'm taking you to Baghdad. Oh, move along there, covers. One size, oh. two. Vamos. Oh. By golly, it does you good. Why are you taking us to Baghdad? I'm going to sell you to the caliphs. Who were, incidentally, born in Kent. Kent? Yes, they're the white caliphs of Dover! Oh. Are they to be sold into slavery? As they are led away by the sinister Nanook of the North, played by David Hatch, one thought must be uppermost in everyone's mind. What a lousy axe. Can they escape before they reach Baghdad? Why does Humphrey Barclay suddenly look so old? Will you be listening next week? Are you listening now? Oh.